For the first time in the history of the world, every human being is now subjected to contact with dangerous chemicals from the moment of conception until death. The central problem of our age has therefore become the contamination of man's total environment with such substances of incredible potential for harm. You might think that chronic disease and poor health are pretty rampant at the moment, but unfortunately, things are about to get a lot worse. Along with everybody getting sicker, human fertility might also be about to nosedive. Plus, we could be heading towards widespread crop failures and famines. And it's all thanks to endocrine disruptors, hormone-disrupting chemicals that we are all increasingly surrounded by on a daily basis. Unless you know how to avoid them, you are being exposed every day to endocrine disrupting chemicals in your food, your water, your cookware, your furniture, your clothes, your personal care products, your cosmetics, your household cleaning products, and even your kids' toys. We have put poisonous and biologically potent chemicals indiscriminately into the hands of persons largely or wholly ignorant of their potentials for harm. We have subjected enormous numbers of people to contact with these poisons without their consent and often without their knowledge. We have allowed these chemicals to be used with little or no advanced investigations of their effect on soil, water, wildlife, and man himself. Future generations are unlikely to condone our lack of prudent concern for the integrity of the natural world that supports all life. There is still very limited awareness of the nature of the threat. Yes, it's a depressing topic, but if you want to stay healthy, you need to know it. And I've got loads of practical tips, resources, and consumer guides coming up. Everything referenced is linked in the description. Endocrine disruptors are man-made chemicals that can interfere with hormone systems and are generally toxic to humans. They have now thoroughly contaminated every ecosystem on the planet, partly due to the industrial activity of the modern world, with factories pumping out industrial waste that include endocrine disruptors like dioxins and other persistent organic pollutants, along with heavy metals with endocrine disrupting effects like mercury. But also because endocrine disruptors now permeate many everyday consumer products. Many of them do not biodegrade readily and instead build up in our environment and bioaccumulate in our bodies. Endocrine disruptors can cause problems in every aspect of human health, but most notably conditions that have emerged largely as a result of the modern world, including hormonal problems such as abnormal sexual development, early puberty, decreased sperm quality, infertility, endometriosis and thyroid problems. Pregnancy-related problems such as fetal and placental disorders, premature birth, low birth weight, and difficulty breastfeeding. Neurodevelopmental problems such as autism, ADHD, and learning disabilities. Neurological and neurodegenerative conditions such as dementia and Parkinson's disease. Autoimmune conditions and general immune system dysfunction. Cancers, notably breast cancer, prostate cancer, testicular cancer, and lymphoma and metabolic conditions, notably type 2 diabetes, obesity, and gut microbiome dysfunction. According to Dr. Shanna Swan, sperm counts have decreased by 50% in the last 40 years and continue to decline at about 1% a year, as do testosterone levels. At the same time, puberty is being experienced in girls at ever younger ages, miscarriage rates are increasing, and there is an increase in women who have diminished ovarian reserves, meaning the quality and quantity of their eggs is lower than expected for any given age. The sexual function of some animals has already been severely affected by endocrine disruptors. These animals are the canaries in the coal mine. So I'm going to go through some of the key areas to be aware of with tips coming up to reduce you and your family's risk. Firstly, pesticides, which include herbicides, insecticides and fungicides, are potent endocrine disruptors. They kill worms and insects, destroy the soil microbiome, and are incredibly damaging to pollinators, including bees. Using chemical warfare against nature is not a good long-term strategy in food production, and there is a very real possibility of this type of farming impacting soil structure and the soil microbiome to such an extent that major crop failures occur. Pesticides end up all over your non-organic food, don't worry though, the government loosely monitors the amount of pesticides in your food and have arbitrarily decided what they think is an acceptable amount for you to ingest. To establish tolerance is to authorise contamination of public food supplies with poisonous chemicals. It is simply impossible to predict the effects of lifetime exposure to chemical and physical agents that are not part of the biological experience of man. Birth to death contact with dangerous chemicals may in the end prove disastrous. Each of these recurrent exposures, no matter how slight, contributes to the progressive buildup of chemicals in our bodies and so to cumulative poisoning. 
This piling up of chemicals from many different sources creates a total exposure that cannot be measured. It is meaningless, therefore, to talk about the safety of any specific amount of residue. As well as pesticides, modern intensive monocrop agriculture relies on chemical fertilizers, which are produced from fossil fuels in factories that discharge endocrine disruptors into the environment, as well as being in the finished product. Chemical fertilizers reduce soil quality, increase soil susceptibility to erosion, and readily run off into waterways damaging aquatic ecosystems. So here's what to do, eat organic food. This includes drinks and alcohol, there really is no reason for anyone to be consuming non-organic alcoholic drinks. The exception to this rule is fish, since organic salmon is farm salmon and farm salmon is battery salmon, fish should be wild and a wild animal cannot be classed as organic. Source your food carefully from those you trust. I do trust my local organic food box, but would not trust, for example, nuts and seeds from China labelled as organic. Don't buy flower bouquets for your loved ones, likely to have been sprayed with a chemical cocktail. Avoid golf courses and other highly processed landscapes which rely heavily on pesticides. Be cautious about living near cropland. In your garden, use manure and homemade compost rather than chemical fertilizers. And certainly don't go to your local garden center and buy Roundup or any other pesticides to spray on your property. Gardening is now firmly linked with the super poisons. Little is done, however, to warn the gardener or homeowner that he is handling extremely dangerous materials. Next on to PFAS chemicals, aka forever chemicals, because they do not biodegrade and so will continue to build up in the environment until humans stop using them. These endocrine disruptors are used for water resistant, grease resistant and stain resistant coatings. PFAS chemicals crop up all over the place. The most obvious example is in non-stick cookware like Teflon, which you should definitely avoid. I've covered this in a previous video, so check that out for the cookware solutions. Tips to avoid the other sources coming up later. Here is the Royal Society of Chemistry advising the UK government that it should probably do something about the high level of forever chemicals in tap water. Something that the government don't seem too bothered by. Governments constantly run on an innocent until proven guilty basis with all endocrine disrupting chemicals which are largely unregulated. We are accustomed to look for the gross and immediate effect and to ignore all else. Unless this appears promptly and in such obvious form that it cannot be ignored, we deny the existence of hazard. I highly recommend Rachel Carson's 1962 book Silent Spring, which gives loads of shocking contamination stories and describes the environmental fallout and human impact, mostly related to the insecticide DDT. Next onto pharmaceuticals. The production of medications produces a huge amount of industrial waste that's dumped into the environment. Even just the blister packs that tablets come in create a vast quantity of plastic waste. But as well as endocrine disrupting industrial waste, drugs themselves often have very concerning direct impacts. Paracetamol, aka Tylenol, supposedly the most benign of medications, lightly contributes to abnormal sexual development and neurodevelopment in children. I've done a video on this linked in the description. Similarly, ibuprofen can cause significant changes in testicular function. Synthetic estrogens that are peed out by women taking hormonal contraceptives damage river ecosystems and are known to cause sexual dysfunction in fish. Up to a quarter of UK freshwater fish are intersex thanks to the actions of humans. So here's what to do. Firstly, avoid synthetic hormones. Secondly, stay healthy so as to avoid the need for other pharmaceutical agents, which is nice and simple. Just buy the concise nutrition and lifestyle guide and follow the practical tips within. Link in the description. Next, onto plastic, which, since it doesn't biodegrade, will continue to build up in our green spaces and oceans until we stop producing more. Plastics are a major source of really nasty endocrine disruptors, such as phthalates and BPA, which are used in the manufacture of plastics and readily leach out of the finished products. Phthalates and BPA are widespread in all plastics, and that includes plastic toys, plastic children's cups and plates, baby bottles, and so on. BPA is common in food packaging, including the lining of food tins and cans, as well as in thermal paper used for receipts. Phthalates are also found in the capsules of modified release medications, and medical equipment is full of endocrine disruptors, including phthalates, BPA and PFAS chemicals. As well as the endocrine disrupting chemicals within plastic, there is also the problem of microplastics themselves. These small bits of plastic debris can get absorbed into our bodies and are likely impacting fertility. 
Microplastics are also thought to be able to cross the blood-brain barrier and enter the brain. In animals, microplastics impact brain health and behaviour. The same thing may be happening in humans. So here's what to do. Basically, avoid plastic as much as possible. Children are increasingly surrounded by plastic junk, and this is a really bad move. Don't store food in plastic. Definitely don't heat food in plastic, which accelerates the leaching of phthalates and BPA. Avoid canned foods where possible. Avoid getting and handling receipts. Also, be aware of substitutions. For example, BPA-free probably just means another endocrine disruptor you haven't heard of in its place, such as BPS or BPF. Paper or cardboard food packaging, unless it's for dry food, must be coated internally with something, which could be plastic, but may also be those grease-resistant PFAS chemicals, as is the case in a lot of fast food packaging, as well as paper drinks straws. Now, speaking of plastic, the next category is fabrics and textiles, which are a major source of microplastics that come from polyester and other synthetic clothing. These fabrics are plastics, something many people still do not appreciate. As well as clothes, polyester is common in furniture fabrics, like sofas, carpets, rugs, bedding and mattresses. These often contain other endocrine disruptors, including flame retardants, a well-known category of endocrine disruptor commonly used in furniture and mattresses, as well as PFAS chemicals providing stain resistance, for example, in carpets. Add to that industrial dyes and fabric softeners and you get a pretty nasty cocktail. Just like plastic, you need to avoid all synthetic fibres as much as possible. Avoid synthetic mattresses, furniture and rugs. Be aware of anything labelled stain resistant. Do not lay carpets, go for wood flooring instead. Clothes should be natural fibres like wool and organic cotton, and bought from brands that are transparent, including when it comes to waterproofs and footwear that may be using PFAS chemicals. Organic is important when it comes to cotton, because non-organic cotton is a pesticide-heavy crop that damages those who work with it. Definitely head to the Soil Association website for brands that you can trust. This is where I got two new mattresses from recently, handmade from natural materials without flame retardants. And the t-shirts I always wear are organic cotton from sea salt. And definitely don't buy polyester children's soft toys. I've covered this and the better alternatives in a previous video linked in the description. On to cosmetics, personal care products and household cleaning products. This is very simple. They are all full of endocrine disrupting chemicals. Just look at the label of regular shampoo, soap, makeup, perfume, hairspray, deodorant, or any household cleaning product. You can't even pronounce half of the toxic chemicals they contain. A very unpleasant irony of hair and beauty products is that they are increasing the risk of breast cancer in women, along with increasing the difficulty and complications of pregnancy, childbirth, and breastfeeding. And of course, all down the drain and straight to those fish again. Some examples of the endocrine disruptors in this category include Parabens, commonly used as preservatives in many of these products, including shampoos. Phthalates make an appearance again as a solvent in perfumes, also in nail polishes and hairsprays. Most synthetic fragrances, in anything from soap to laundry powder, are endocrine disruptors. The chemical UV filters in sunscreens are endocrine disruptors known to decrease fish fertility, damage coral, cause deformities in crabs and mussels, and impair seaweed photosynthesis. That's right, smear that all over your vitamin D deficient children. Even Sudocrem, NHS recommended nappy rash cream that you put on your baby's genitals contains BHA, a probable endocrine disruptor and carcinogen. So here's what to do. Avoid all mainstream products. Assume a guilty until proven innocent stance. Avoid anything with a chemistry lab ingredients list. Don't put anything on your skin unless you know what it is. Avoid anything with a fragrance from shampoos to washing powders. Avoid high turnover plastic packaged products. And try to minimise use of any unnecessary cosmetics, personal care products or cleaning agents, which is most of them. Go for minimalist or DIY options instead. I currently use an olive oil bar soap, which has no plastic packaging. And for shampoo, a raw egg, twice a week, courtesy of my chickens, works a treat. There are plenty of natural moisturisers and skincare products out there, such as lanolin, coconut oil, shea butter, aloe vera, calendula, and so on. Our cleaning spray is vinegar and water, and bicarbonate of soda comes into play for cleaning as well, so there are plenty of easy, non-toxic options. Using chemical cleaning products also increases the risk of asthma, allergy, and autoimmune conditions, as I have discussed in my video on immune system calibration, which is linked in the description. 
You can use the Environmental Working Group, or EWG's, Skin Deep section to search for specific ingredients, brands, or products to get an idea of how toxic they may be, as well as to search for low-tox options. And again, in the UK, the Soil Association has a directory of brands that you can look at too, many of which use glass rather than plastic, plus some that use refill schemes. By this stage, it will probably be of no surprise when I say pretty much all building material is full of endocrine disruptors. This includes insulation, flooring such as carpets and vinyl flooring, many paints and glues, flame retardants, which are also in electronics and electrical equipment, even cement and treated timber, and of course more plastic than ever is being used. And these toxic building materials, along with all the other endocrine disruptors in our houses, mean indoor air quality is becoming increasingly bad for our health. For example, vinyl flooring increases indoor airborne phthalate concentration, and children from homes with vinyl flooring have higher detectable levels in their urine. So here's what to do. For health, you probably want less house and more garden, and to maximise your time outdoors. Don't lay carpets or vinyl flooring, don't put a treated timber raised bed down for your garden veg patch because those chemical preservatives that the wood is treated with can leach out and end up in your crops, along with the phthalates from your garden hose that you water them with, of course. Avoid unnecessary building work as much as possible, but if you are getting some done, then definitely check out the EWG building guide. It's got loads of different sections to guide you through all those common pitfalls, and it's great if you're doing anything else in your garden or house, including redecorating. Unfortunately, traces of endocrine disrupting chemicals and common prescription medications end up in your tap water, just one of the highly unpleasant experiments we are conducting on children and pregnant women. As far as I'm aware, a reverse osmosis water filtration system gives the best chance of removing these, but then you end up with demineralized water that you have to remineralize, and this turns into a bit of an experiment in itself. Tap water is likely to become increasingly problematic as time goes on. In an age when man has forgotten his origins and is blind even to his most essential needs for survival, water, along with other resources, has become the victim of his indifference. Indeed, one of the most alarming aspects of the chemical pollution of water is the fact that here, in river or lake or reservoir, or for that matter, in the glass of water served at your dinner table, are mingled chemicals that no responsible chemist would think of combining in his laboratory. In the entire water pollution problem, there is probably nothing more disturbing than the threat of widespread contamination of groundwater. It is not possible to add pesticides to water anywhere without threatening the purity of water everywhere. Remember, all factory produced goods involve toxic endocrine disruptors in their production that are released into the environment. In the age of consumerism and materialism, that's bad news. That includes all your electronics and probably all of your material possessions. Therefore, my formulation for your environmental impact is the amount of material possessions you have multiplied by how toxic they are, including production, usage and disposal, multiplied by your turnover. The way to reduce your impact on future generations therefore becomes minimalism, embracing living with the minimal amount of material possessions, sourcing ethically produced goods, ideally handmade items that where possible are biodegradable and not synthetic, and buying fewer high quality items that last longer and repairing and reusing what you already have. Yes, health gadgets, electric vehicles, solar panels, all highly destructive to the environment. You can't bypass the chemical impact of materialism and you can't plant a tree to offset endocrine disruptors. Have we fallen into a mesmerized state that makes us accept as inevitable that which is inferior or detrimental, as though having lost the will or the vision to demand that which is good? Ultimately, we will get what we tolerate, and remember, we all vote with our wallet. I hope you found this video useful. Please do comment if you have any resources or tips to share, and good luck navigating the chemical minefield. Please do subscribe, and I'll see you next time.